uh, regardless. Hope this thing is clear now. Uh, now, uh, in this class, uh, let us see about a neuronal disease called as epilepsy. See, epilepsy has got a lot of superstitions. People used to think that a demon is coming on human beings and is because of that, people are acting weirdly. You know, the father of medicine, Hippocrates, he said epilepsy is a neuronal disease. It is, there is a problem within, it is not coming from the outside. Now, when you see epilepsy, it is commonly known as fits, convulsions, seizure, a lot of words are there. Let us understand one by one. Now, epilepsy is characterized by periodic seizures, periodic seizure. Now, see, epilepsy is the disease which is characterized by periodic occurrence of seizures. So what do you mean by seizure? Seizure means neuronal excitation, high neuronal excitation. Seizure means high neuronal excitation. Now, you need to understand what is happening. See, because of neuronal excitation, a lot of coordinated movements will happen. When neurons, see, in some of the literature it is given as neuronal firing. Firing is nothing but releasing neurotransmitters. When neurotransmitters are released, voltage is changed, hence it is also known as neuronal firing. Now, when neurotransmitter is released, that causes a kind of excitation. Imagine you have excitatory neurotransmitter which is released. On the peripheral organ, it is causing the excitation. Because of that excitation, imagine a muscle contraction is occurring. If at a particular period of time a neurotransmitter releases and it causes a kind of contraction moment. If high neuronal discharge is there in a, in a limited uh, period of time, so many neurons are firing, then what happens? This contraction will become continuously, it becomes like this. That is what becomes epilepsy. So high neuronal excitement or high neuronal firing or repeated neuronal firing is known as schism. And this is this happens periodically in epilepsy. So briefly, this is what is epilepsy. And you have another word called as convulsions. And one more word is there, convulsion. See, convulsion means rapid contraction and relaxation of muscle. Contraction, relaxation. Contraction, relaxation. That is called convulsion. All of them are talking about the same thing. Now, when you see the physiology, what is wrong in this physiology is, this is the main problem. There is a continuous neuronal firing is there, and all the neuronal firing is related to excitation. So the continuous excitation will damage the coordination, and it results in continuous contraction and relaxations. That is what the problem in epilepsy. So this is also known as continuous neuronal firing. Now, epilepsy can be of primary and secondary. Understand these words. Epilepsy could be because of genetic reasons. Genetically, it may it may inherit it to uh, children, and that is known as primary epilepsy. Now, the other one is secondary epilepsy is because of brain injuries. Yes. Yeah. Dopa? Yeah, it is present in brain. See, I think uh, uh, let me answer once I finish this session. Okay, let me answer this. See. What is the work of decarboxylase to convert dopa to dopamine? You need the presence of dopamine inside the brain, not outside. If it is converting dopa to dopamine outside the brain, it cannot get into the brain. Inside the brain, you need dopa decarboxylase. That's what we studied in atomic nervous system. So that enzyme is responsible for converting do dopa to dopamine. If it is inside the brain, inside the brain, it will be acting and, and Parkinson's will be treated. If it is converting outside the brain, it cannot get inside the brain. That is the problem. That is the reason why you are using peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors. Think about it and then you will get it. Don't just read it. Think, then you will get it. Okay, so epilepsy is characterized by periodic seizures. What do you mean by seizures? Seizures is high neuronal excitation or high neuronal firing. Now, this neuronal excitation continuously, the neurons will be firing or neurotransmitter is releasing. That is what causes continuous excitation. That is what results in epilepsy. 
now convulsion is sudden contraction and relaxation of muscle that is what is called as convulsion now epilepsy is you have primary secondary epilepsy is after primary epilepsy is because of genetic problems genetically they are inherited secondary is because of brain injuries any any uh, concussion injury to the brain may result in epilepsy too now understand why this happens is there is a problem in in neuronal communication the continuous excitement is excitation is what is causing epilepsy why the continuous excitation is happening think about this there is a word called as channelopathy channelopathy now channelo is derived from channels ion channels pathy is derived from pathology there is a problem in ion channels imagine this thing let's say there is a sodium channel in the brain and the sodium channel there is a problem in sodium channel and the channel is open all the time when it is open what happens sodium rushes inside the cell when sodium gets inside the cell what happens it results in action potential and that action potential will continue to fire or continuous neural excitement will be there so this channelopathy the problem in ion channel is because of a genetic disease and that is what happens in primary epilepsy so why epilepsy is occurring continuous firing of neurons or high neuronal excitement and that could occur because of action potential when this happens when the channel is continuously open when sodium is continuously rushing inside the brain it causes continuous activation in epilepsy so that is called as channelopathy so epilepsy is because of high excitation of brain now what do you need to do in order to treat this epilepsy the excitation has to be controlled either you can inhibit the excitatory neurotransmitter or you can activate inhibitory neurotransmitter but before getting into that let us understand what are the types of epilepsy is there and how it happens now epilepsy is classified as now epilepsy is classified as partial and general you understand this word partial epilepsy means a particular part of the brain will get affected and only the epileptic neuronal firing will occur there that's why it is called as partial a part of the cerebral cortex is getting affected whereas general means the entire brain is get affected the whole thing you have the continuous firing of neuronal is there in entire cerebral cortex see this can be figured out easily with electroencephalogram electrodes will be placed on the scan and they will test the neuronal activity if continuous wave firing is there that indicates some kind of epilepsy so partial is restricted to only a particular region generalized will be the entire cerebral cortex in partial again you have simple and complex affect simple and then again complex now only the difference between simple and complex is in simple partial seizures or epilepsy the consciousness will be there that means the subject will be awake whereas in complex they will lose their consciousness they will not be awake they will lose their consciousness in general epilepsy too because the entire cerebral cortex is in, involved they won't have any awakefulness or consciousness they will lose their consciousness so epilepsy is classified as partial and general partial epileptic lesion occurs only at a particular place in that again you have simple and complex surgery simple means it is it will not take away the wakefulness subject will be wide awake conscious will be there whereas in complex the subject loses its consciousness now based on the area they are again classified as see the partial at the particular epileptic lesion can occur at frontal region or it can occur at parietal region or it can occur at occipital region or it can happen to temporal region if you remember all these are cerebral cortex areas see the brain is completely covered with this cerebral cortex so most of the then the lesions or injuries will occur to this cerebral cortex regions so that could occur to frontal parietal occipital or temporal region. now if there is a damage in frontal cortex and that is causing a kind of partial seizures that will affect this frontal region frontal region will be carrying out our motor functions so people will have problem in their motor functions what are the motor functions neurons will take the information to the brain 
brain processes that information and accordingly it sends the information to skeletal muscles or to the peripheral organs that is motor vision and this part will get damaged when people will get frontal partial epilepsy now what all whatever the reason is controlling a particular function that function will get affected frontal reason will be controlling motor functions so motor functions will get affected whereas parietal they will control sensory information if, if the damage to parietal reason occurred they may lose their sense of sight or lose their sense of hearing or they lose the sense of smelling anything so that is what is sensation occipital there is a particular epileptic problem related to eye called as nystagmus in that particular condition it is called as nystagmus n y s t a g m u s nystagmus in this particular condition the subject will be continuously moving his eye for this is a kind of epilepsy and that occurs when a partial seizure or partial epilepsy happens to this occipital joint you know this part is frontal this one is parietal the back one is occipital these are temporal zones so the last one epileptic seizure to temporal zone results in psychological problems that is the reason why people show you when someone is mad they they show the finger here this reason the temporal reasons has got psychological centers so all these things will cause a particular kind of epilepsy now coming to general one general one you have again in general seizure see general seizure is a is a kind of severe kind of epilepsy because the entire lobes are involved cerebral cortex entirely is getting affected and uh, most of the most of the cases subject will lose their consciousness now in general you have tonic seizures clonic seizures myoclonic i'm sorry myotonic clonic tonic or tonic clonic and then finally absent so this clonic tonic is also known as grand mal right it's separately now let let me explain about these things see tonicity means muscle contraction tonic seizures because the entire cerebral cortex is affected the muscle contractions will be like this the severe contractions will be there and that is what happens in tonic seizures clonic means jerking movements severe jerkings will be there and that that's what happens in clonic one. myoclonic again the muscle tonicity the complete contractions the entire muscles will get contracted now clonic tonic or tonic clonic is dangerous one muscle contraction with jerking movement is there most of the time this is what affects in most of the subjects this is also known as grand mal epilepsy grand mal epilepsy is nothing but tonic clonic epilepsy wherein you see contraction with jerking movements the other one absent seizure is also known as petit mal this petit mal usually happens in young children now the reason why it is called as absent seizure is people don't even realize it is a epileptic attack because let's say someone is writing when they get this absent seizure effect whatever the ongoing activity is there it stops there itself. let's say someone is writing and he got this option she is a attack he will stop writing there the epileptic attack will be there for a couple of minutes after that he don't even know what has happened because of that it is known as absent seizure because they lose their uh, presence of mind they will be completely absent minded hence it is known as absent seizure it is known as petit mal now the other one tonic clonic is grand mal see even though we have all these types are there majority of cases fall into these two conditions grand mal petit mal so these are all the types of epilepsy again let me remind you treating epilepsy is completely based on diagnosis what kind of epilepsy is there based on that treatment will be there the reason is petit mal epilepsy is because of calcium channel of epilepsy there is an l type calcium channel is there in the brain and that particular type of calcium channel when there is a problem in that calcium channel calcium leaks inside the cell when it is leaking inside the cell calcium comes with a positive charge and that positive charge generates an action potential and that gives continuous neuronal firing so in order to treat this the drug should block or close the calcium channel so that specific drug has to be used you cannot use any other drug no it is it should not be used in fact it is contraindicated now remember this what all the drugs used to treat epilepsy the anti epileptic drugs all of them has got the ability to cause epilepsy so 
so physician need to understand the underlying condition diagnosis is important and accordingly the drugs has to be given imagine this thing let's say one of the epilepsy is because of sodium channel problem and this abscess seizure is because of calcium channel problem if you treat the sodium channel problem with a calcium channel blocker what happens you are worsening the condition similarly abscess seizure is because of calcium channel opening if you use a sodium channel blocker to treat this condition what happens it worsens the condition so treating epilepsy is completely based on diagnosis and diagnosis is important let me revise it so epilepsy is is characterized by periodic seizures a seizure is high neuronal activity or continuous firing of neurons is nothing but seizures and this continuous firing increases excitement the continuous excitement is what causes a kind of seizure or epilepsy convulsion is sudden contraction and relaxation of muscle now there are two basic kinds of the primary and secondary primary is because of genetic reasons and secondary is because of some brain injury now based upon the reason they are transferred as partial and generalized in partial epilepsy a particular reason of a brain is getting affected whereas in generalized seizures the whole brain is affected these things can be find out with the help of electroencephalogram now in case of partial seizure again you have simple and complex seizures are there the classification of simple and complex is based on consciousness if the subject is widely aware it is called a simple one if he loses his consciousness it is called as complex again based on the area it is classified as frontal parietal occipital and temporal any any of the particular reason may get epileptic attack the frontal reason is affected motor functions will get affected if parietal reason gets this epileptic shock sensory functions will get affected occipital may result in a condition called as nystagmus rapid eyeball movement whereas temporal because psychic problem. in case of generalized one you have tonic clonic myoclonic tonic clonic and absent seizures are there out of them the tonic clonic is known as grand mal absent seizures known as petit mal petit mal is because of leak calcium channels so ongoing activity will be stopped there people will lose their presence of mind they will be like absent minded hence it is called as absent seizure tonic clonic continuous contraction jerking movements will be there so these two are the very widely seen epilepsies petit mal epilepsy mostly seen in children now let us understand how the condition can be treated but understand epilepsy is because of increased neuronal activity there is high excitation is there your job is to control that excitation now how it can be done let us see <clears throat>